It's been a while since I've made one of these, and I'm sure that all three of you have been waiting patiently for me to make another one. Now, rest assured, I've been working really hard on Treachery and Beatdown City, and soon you'll be able to see the fruits of our labor. So head over to BeatdownCity.com and follow us on Twitter at Treachery Within. RPGs have a focus on narrative, sure, and we've talked a bit about how a narrative can mean a lot more than a story, but how do you speak to people using just mechanics? Many RPGs have unwinnable battles, and that can be helpful, but the most effective cases of characterization, world building, and storytelling actually come when the game uses its basic mechanics to reinforce other aspects of its design. Final Fantasy IV has a number of great examples. Overall, it is perhaps one of the best examples of using gameplay to tell a story within an RPG. Cecil starts out as a Dark Knight. He is a conflicted character that is often used to attack enemies of the kingdom. His playstyle is fairly similar. For the first half of the game, he is the primary offense of the party. The story takes you to a point where Cecil needs to make a choice and by overcoming his darkness using pacifism, he changes not only his appearance, but also how the player utilizes him. He also shows concern and empathy for other characters more openly than he did as a Dark Knight. The player never questions his change because it is not only within the narrative, but also within the mechanics. Tella is a venerable sage. When the player recruits him, they are overwhelmed with the number of magic spells he has. Of course, he would know all of these spells. He's a world famous sage. However, he is unable to simply rattle off these powerful magics because he is quite old and casting magical spells requires energy. In this way, the game is using his stats as characterization. If he were a world renowned sage but knew all of the same spells as a teenager that just discovered magic, something would be wrong. And if he was able to use all of these powerful magical spells, then the game would be a little easy. Later, to get his revenge, Tella uses a magic spell without enough MP. This causes him to use too much energy, and he dies. MP is now not just a stat, but something that matters, not just within the context of battles, but also within the narrative itself. Perhaps my favorite example in the game is Rydia. At the start of the game, she is a scared child, clinging to Cecil and providing support with very limited white magic. Somewhere along the way, she is separated from Cecil and later rescues him from an unbeatable boss. She just appears on the scene, aged slightly in a new outfit and summoning monsters to attack enemies. She is no longer a child afraid of the world and relying on others, but a woman, confident, powerful, and she loses the ability to heal with white magic, but picks up powerful black magic, and as I mentioned before, the unique ability to summon monsters. The change in this character is complete. Her role within the party, her personality within the narrative, her aesthetic, Everything changes, and the player just rolls with it because it feels natural. Final Fantasy VI has a bunch of great examples as well, but the one that always stood out to me was General Leo. Throughout the story, Leo has been a stand-up guy. He's even helped the party, and at this point, he starts kicking ass and taking names. And you, the player, are controlling him while he does. That is, until he fights the antagonist. After showing how powerful General Leo is, the player is confronted by an enemy even more powerful, the main antagonist, and Leo can't even hurt him. Putting the player in a no-win situation is more powerful than just a single battle. The player develops a connection to the likable Leo and a hatred for the antagonist for robbing the player of a playable character. Also, killing a protagonist while the player is in control of them ups the tension, as often a death just means game over. This battle has a real consequence that goes beyond a singular fight. While there are a bunch of examples outside of Final Fantasy, 
I wanted to focus on those because so many people have played these games and like them, but may not have been able to put their finger on why. I don't like to get into things being inherently good or bad, but it seems like a lot of people say, but old games did X, Y, and Z, and so do new ones. There are a lot of people who dislike Final Fantasy XIII, or Pure Solar, or Mass Effect, or Dragon Age Inquisition, or other RPGs that have come out recently. The discussion often moves to, but it's the same, or, you're just being nostalgic. But when you sit down and actually play some of these games, there are a lot of small details that are easy to miss. In my own experience making games, I've noticed that there are aspects, mechanical, aesthetic, and thematic, that no one notices if they are done well, but are sorely missed if not present. Speaking of my own experience, and while on the subject of RPGs, I'm going to switch gears a bit and talk about genre bending, along with some of my thoughts on beat-em-ups and brawlers. So be sure to join us when we put up our next video. As always, I'm happy to receive feedback and open up discussion, so totally give us a shout, even if it's to shout at us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye!